battle for the soul of the nation the pdp article presidential elections petition the year 2019 is a year nigerians will not forget in a hurry and the day saturday 23rd february may go down in history as the day nigeria witnessed its most contentious and most brazenly violent presidential elections exercise three long days after the exercise and after hours of counting and collation tensions were high the Nigerian nation is more than 190 million citizens and more than 84 million registered voters awaited in tortuous agony the announcement of the winner of the presidential elections. On Tuesday, 26th February, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, in his capacity as a national returning officer, announced that the incumbent President Muhammadu Buhari of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC has been returned as winner of the elections with a total vote of 15,191,847 votes. His closest rival, former Vice President Atiku Aubakar of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, was credited with 11,262,978 votes to poll second. Muhammad Buhari of the All Progressive Congress, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared winner and is returned elected. Thank you. The PDP and its presidential candidate, al Haji Atiku Aubakar, in unequivocal terms, immediately rejected the results of the presidential elections as declared by INEC in its entirety, as it was not, in their considered opinion, the true reflection of the outcome of the election. This year is my three decades in Nigeria's struggle for democracy. But this is the worst election in those 30 years. Let me say that I'm not speaking as a member of the People's Democratic Party, I am speaking as a Nigerian when I say that the electoral fraud perpetrated by the Buhari administration this past Saturday cannot produce a government of the people for the simple reason that it does not reflect the will of the Nigerian people. Following this rejection, on the 18th of March 2019, Atiku and the PDP filed a petition at the Court of Appeal sitting as a Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal with INEC as first respondent and President Buhari and the APC as second and third respondents respectively. Atiku and the PDP cited the Form EC-8DA being the summary of collation of results and Form EC-8E been the declaration of results to show the invalidity of the scores as recorded by the electoral umpire. Atiku's petition further pleads that in the face of the form EC8DA, there were calculation errors as shown and contained in the report of the statisticians which Atiku Aubako and the PDP allegedly relied upon in their petition. The grounds upon which Atiku Aubako and the PDP petition is based are as follows. 1. That the second respondent, Buhari, was not duly elected by majority of lawful votes cast at the election. 2. That the election of Muhammad Buhari is invalid by reason of corrupt practices. 3. The election of Muhammad Buhari is invalid by reason of non-compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. 4. That Muhammad Buhari was at the time of the election not qualified to contest the said election. 5. That Muhammad Buhari submitted to INEC an affidavit containing false information of a fundamental nature in aid of his qualification for the said election. In the opening facts of the petition, Atiku and the PDP averred that, unquote, the second respondent, Buhari, was not duly elected by majority of lawful votes cast at the election. Atiku claims that INEC wrongfully and unlawfully credited Muhammad Buhari with the votes which were not valid or lawful votes at various stages of the election, namely the polling unit, the ward collation centers, the local government collation centers, and the state collation centers, with the result that the second respondent, Muhammad Buhari, was wrongfully returned when he did not score majority of the lawful votes. Atiku Aubakar and the PDP said they shall invite statisticians forensic examiners and fingerprint experts to establish that the scores credited Muhammad Buhari were not the product of actual votes validly cast at the polling units. The PDP and its candidate say that they shall rely on electronic video recordings, newspaper reports, photographs and photographic images of several infractions of the electoral processes by the respondents, INEC, Buhari and the APC. Both Atiku Aubakar and the PDP contend that the data in the INEC server as at 25th February 2019 showed the true actual and correct results based on a state-by-state -state computation. 
they went on to posit that based on the imputed and transmitted results on the server, Atiko and the PDP polled a total of 18,356,732 votes, while the APC polled 16,741,430 votes. This showed a clear difference of 1,615,302 votes. This, however, is in sharp contrast to the INEC results as declared on February 26, 2019, which credited Atiku with a total of 11,262,978 votes, while the incumbent president Muhammad Buhari was credited with 15,191,847 votes. The petitioners insist that smart card readers deployed by INEC in addition to accreditation equally transmitted electronically the results of voting from polling units directly to the server of INEC. This is because the presiding officers of INEC directly imputed the results from the polling units at the end of voting and transmitted directly to the server in addition to manually taking the form EC8As to the wards for collation. In lay terms, therefore, Atiku posits that INEX agents at the polling units use the smart card reader for electronic collation and transmission of results. Atiku and the PDP claim that they shall rely on the video demonstration by INEC of the deployment of smart card readers for authentication of accreditation and for transmission of data during the trial. They also claim that they will produce extract of data as contained on the INEX central servers as at 25 February 2019 before the tribunal. They insist that this is collaborated by the whistleblowing website www.factsdontlie.com. Another point of contention is the issue of registered voters. INEC had on the day of election published the total number of registered voters in the country as 84 million and 4,084. It was thus worrisome that the same INEC turns around and published a different figure of 82,344,107 as registered voters, leading to an unexplained difference of 1,659,977 registered voters. INEC equally published the number of permanent voters cards or PVC collected for the purpose of the presidential elections as 72,775,502. Atiku Abubakar and the PDP alleged that the actual number of voters accredited at the election was 35,098,162. INEC wrongly suppressed and or reduced the number of accredited voters to 29 million 304,209 to the detriment of the petitioners Atiku Abubakar and the PDP. In their bid to prove that Muhammad Buhari was not duly elected by a majority of lawful votes cast at the election, Atiku Abubakar and the PDP petition went on to catalog the infractions and non-compliance with the Electoral Act 2010 as amended as well as INEX regulations and guidelines for the conduct of the 2019 elections. The Atiku petition claims that INEC had by its own regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections 2019, which was in pursuant of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, provided for the mandatory use of card readers for the 2019 election. INEC, by its press release on smart card readers, issued in February 2019 and signed by its National Commissioner, Barista Festus Okoye, reiterated that, unquote, the use of the smart card reader is not only mandatory, but its deliberate non-use attracts the sanction of possible prosecution of erring officials in accordance with the INEC regulations and guidelines for the conduct of the elections. This is in addition to the voiding of any resort emanating from such units or areas as was done in the presidential and national assembly elections of February 23, 2019. Unquote. By this stated position of the first respondent, INEC, all accreditation not done by the smart card reader in the presidential election was and remained void. On the second ground of the petition is the non-compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. Cardinal was the non-holding of elections and cancellation of results. Article's petition claims that election was cancelled in many polling units in the country and as admitted by INEC, these cancellations were in 4,171 polling units across the nation. The cancelled election covered 2,906,384 registered voters. This figure was as announced by the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, during the national collation of the results. This means that 
2,906,384 registered voters were unable to vote on the day of the election even though they went out to vote. Furthermore, after announcing a winner in the obviously unconcluded election, INEC ordered supplementary elections in 14 states of the federation, namely Abia State, Akwaibom, Anambra, Bauchi, Benue, Imo, Kaduna, Kogi, Lagos, Ondo, Oyo, Plateau, Rivers, and Sokoto. This totaled 2,341 polling units, covering 2,698,773 registered voters. In their petition, Article and the PDP contend that if 2,906,384 cancelled votes are added to the 2,698,773 voters who did not vote, the total figure will stand at 5,605,157, which far exceeds the figure of 3,928,869 votes, which was the difference in the votes INEC had announced between the scores of Muhammadu Buhari and those of Atiku Abubakar. By law, as the petitioners claim, INEC ought to have declared the February 23, 2019 presidential election inconclusive as it did in several other elections, including the National Assembly elections conducted on the same day. Since the presidential and the National Assembly elections were held simultaneously on the 23rd of February, whatever affected either election affected the other and vice versa. In addition, a computation of the number of accredited voters and the total votes cast at the said election shows that 750,019 votes were unaccounted for in the results declared by INEC from the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. This is curious as both accreditation and voting took place at the same time, one after the other. Atiku Awubaka and the PDP avowed that there were discrepancies on very large scales at the various levels of recording and collation of the results, particularly between the polling units level and the world collations level. They alleged that INEC and its agents wrongfully and deliberately entered wrong results in 11 states, namely Borunu, Yobe, Bauchi, Gombe, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Niger, and Zamfara states. In Bruno State, Atiku alleges that there are wrong entries and returns in the 26 local government areas. This was in 1,952 polling units out of the 3,933 polling units in the state. The petitioners claim that they have proof that there was no accreditation in 200 polling units, meaning that no voter was accredited, yet returns were made. In their petition, Atiku and the PDP allege that INEC wrongfully posted votes from 1,589 out of the 1,941 polling units in the 26 local government areas of the state without any authentication or authorship of any presiding officer in respect of these polling units. On the issue of overvoting, Atiku and the PDP contend that the number of votes returned and announced by INEC far exceeds the number of accredited voters in 419 polling units in Bruno State. The claim that they shall rely on the statistician's report at the trial. Atiku's petition alleges that there was the inflation and deflation of votes, claiming that INEC wrongfully credited Atiku and the PDP with 71,788 votes as against 281,897 votes which they claimed they actually scored, thus reducing or deflating Atiku's votes by 210,109 votes. Atiku and the PDP contend that INEC wrongfully made various unlawful entries and inscriptions on the forms EC8As in 1,013 polling units of the 1,941 polling units across the 26 local government areas of Bruno State. In their petition, Atiku and the PDP contend that most parts of Bruno State have been under the siege of Boko Haram insurgency. They also claim that it was generally reported that there were sporadic bomb blasts and gun attacks on the day of the election, which they claim generally affected the voter turnout. This is collaborated by several local and international accounts in the media. In Atiku's petition, INEC wrongfully credited the second and third respondents, Buhari and the APC, with non-existent votes. There are similar accounts in 17 local government areas of Yobe State. This was prevalent in 660 polling units out of the 1,714 polling units in the state. This included wrong entries and returns, zero accreditation where no voter was accredited yet returns were made, the non-authentication or authorship of results by any presiding officer in respect of these polling units, inflating and deflation of votes, wrongful entries on form EC8A. In fact, even worse than in Borono State, most parts of Yobe State 
have been under the siege of Boko Haram insurgency and general security threats. It was generally reported that there were sporadic bomb blasts on the day of the election. It was so severe that even the Yobe state governor was unable to cast his vote on election day. In the neighboring Yobe state, hundreds of residents and potential voters fled the town of Gedam after suspected Boko Haram fighters attempted to infiltrate the city. These events generally affected voter turnout. There were similar cases in 843 polling units out of the 2,516 polling units in 14 local government areas in Zamfara. In Niger state, Atiku claims that there were wrong entries and returns in 15 out of the 25 local government areas. This affected 1,028 polling units out of the 3,185 polling units in the state. Similar scenarios were cataloged in Atiku's petition in Katsina State, where there were wrong entries and returns in at least 2,155 polling units out of the 4,903 polling units in the state. Bauchi State, where 1,864 polling units out of the 4,074 polling units were also affected. In Jigawa State, 2,266 polling units out of the 3,528 polling units in the state were affected. Kaduna State, 1,452 polling units out of the 5,108 polling units in the 23 local government areas in the state. In Kanu State, this affected no less than 1,466 polling units out of the 8,074 polling units across the 44 local government areas in the state. Why in Gombe State, Atiku and the PDP catalogued several incidents of other acts of non-compliance. Atiku alleges that INEC officials either encouraged, connived with, or tolerated the acts of agents of the second and third respondent, Buhari and the APC, and armed personnel of the security forces of Nigeria to disrupt the disputed elections and undertook steps that undermined its fairness and integrity. This they laid out, pleaded, and particularized on a state-by-state -state basis in their 146-page petition. The petition posits that on the election day, INEC wrongfully created polling units which were unknown at the time to both Atiku and the PDP and the general public. Here, votes were generated and added to the total results in favor of the first and second respondents, Buhari and the APC. It is canvassed that some of such polling units were set up by INEC, particularly in Katsina, Borono, Zamfara, Yube, and Jigawa states. They also claim that after the declaration of results at the polling units and the duplicate pink copies released to agents of various parties, all three respondents engaged in unlawfully and wrongfully amending, altering, overwriting, substitution of figures and results with a view to assisting the second and third respondents in obtaining favorable figures in the entries in the election result sheets. There were also particulars of breaches, non-compliance, corrupt practices which were all cataloged by Atiku and the PDP on a state-by-state -state basis. Cardinal cases are cited in Bronno State, where the total number of accredited voters across the state as reflected in the form EC8A was 383,229 and the total votes cast in Bruno State was 372,347. However, and surprisingly too, the official result declared by INEC was 919,786 which was 536,557 more than the total number of accredited voters. Over 200 polling units across the state had zero accredited voters, even when results were declared for the units. Furthermore, overvoting incidences occurred in over 419 polling units across Brno State. Further particulars were also supplied. A case in point is in the Umboa Kura ward of Chibok local government. Here, the smart card reader was not used and there was allegedly no election, yet ballot papers were thumb printed and the PDP was allotted zero votes. The third ground of Atiku's petition is that the election of Muhammad Buhari is invalid by reason of corrupt practices. These were itemized to include but are not limited to the following. Compromise printing and production of election materials, manipulation and misuse of state resources, manipulation of the ballots and ballot boxes, manipulation of card readers, manipulation of accreditation and collation, manipulation of security agencies and the militarization of the election, manipulation of election material delivery, arbitrary arrest and detention of members and supporters of the petitioners, and massive thumb printing of ballot papers. On the compromise printing and production of election materials, Atiku and the PDP claim that in the run-up to the presidential election of 23rd February 2019, INEC awarded the contract for the production of electoral materials, including supply of machines printing the permanent voters' cards to Activate Technologies Limited, a company owned by Alhaji Muhammad Musa, who is allegedly a high-ranking member of the APC. Alhaji Muhammad Musa was a senatorial candidate of the APC for Niger East Senatorial Zone at the National Assembly election that was held on the same day with the presidential election. The said Alhaji Muhammad Musa allegedly 
won the Senate seat in an election where his registered company, Activate Technologies, was contracted by INEC to produce election materials, including supply of machines used for printing the permanent voters' cards. Next is the allegation of manipulation and misuse of state resources. The petition claims that while using his position as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the second respondent, Buhari, commenced a program or a scheme called Trader Money in a bid to improperly influence voters through which Nigerian electorate, most especially traders across the Federation, were, a few weeks to the presidential election, given 10,000 naira each clearly to influence votes in favor of the second and third respondents. The second respondent, Buhari, through the Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibajo, went around the nation sharing the sum of 10,000 naira to traders. This is akin to using state resources to buy votes. Of particular note is the fact that there was no budget provision for the trader money scheme. More so, since the Buhari administration assumed office in his first term on May 29, 2015, he did not inaugurate the scheme until weeks to the scheduled 2019 presidential election. Mr. Awa Rafsajani of Transparency International, the respected global civil society organization leading the fight against corruption, warned that the program amounted to vote buying. In January 2019, Awa Rafsajani, who is the chairman of Transparency International Nigeria, in widely published and broadcasted statements, declared that the initiative was, unquote, an official use of public funds in the name of trader money to actually induce voters. For the first time, you know, we have seen, you know, official uh, use of public funds, you know, in the name of um, trade uh, money to actually induce voters, because this is not a program that was part and parcel of the manifesto of the ruling party, and it is not done three years ago. It is only done when it is about election time. This is clearly a vote buying using public funds to do that. It goes contrary really to our constitution and to having a free and fair election. Atiku and the PDP claim that as president of Nigeria and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Buhari manipulated and used the security agencies to influence the outcome of the election in favor of himself. Shortly before the election, he publicly ordered security agents to shoot to kill persons involved in ballot box snatching, which Atiku believed was intended to target supporters of the opposition, even if not involved in ballot box snatching, as there was no threat of ballot box snatching as at the time Buhari gave the order. Anybody who thinks he has enough influence in his locality to lead a body of facts to snatch boxes or to disturb the voting system, he will do it at the expense of his own life. Furthermore, the punishment for ballot box snatching is adequately provided for in the laws of Nigeria and does not include the summary extrajudicial execution of citizens. The chief of army staff also publicly announced that he will obey the shooter side order to the letter. Commanders must deal decisively with any electoral crime or action that will be inimical to national security. The election was thus marred by serial reports across board of the involvement of military and police personnel in the disruption of the voting exercise. This was rampant in states such as Rivers, Borono, Benue, Kogi, Yobe, Kebi, Kaduna, Zamfara, Nasarawa and Plato states. Atiku and the PDP claimed that the military and police officers' active involvement was in aid of members and supporters of the first and second respondents to attack terrorize and scare away members of the PDP and supporters of Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, thus preventing them from voting. On the manipulation of card readers, contrary to his own repeated declarations that the use of card readers was mandatory for all elections, INEC was selective in their use. Card readers were hardly or not used at all in states such as Bauchi, Brono, Kebi, Yobe, Zamfara, Katsina, Kaduna, Nanja, Nasarawa, Gombe, Jigawa and Kanu states. The limited or no use of the car readers enabled the agents and representatives of the second respondents with the assistance of INEC to ascribe to Muhammadu Buhari votes that he, in the opinion of the PDP and Atiku, allegedly did not score. On the manipulation of accreditation and collation processes, Atiku and the PDP claim that many resource sheets were not signed by the presiding officers, neither were they stamped and authenticated in Bauchi, Brunu, Yobe, Zamfara, Katsina, Kebi. Kaduna, Nainja, Nasarawa, Gombe, Jigawa, Kogi, and Kano states. To this end, Atiku and the PDP rely on forms EC8As, EC8Bs, and EC8Cs in the affected states. Atiku Abubakar and the PDP further aver that there was massive and multiple tom printing of ballot papers by agents of the APC, 
with the connivance of INEC. Atikoa Uboka and the PDP thus claim that the presidential election of 23rd February 2019 was characterized by widespread violence and not compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. The members of the Nigerian Bar Association MBA ad hoc election monitoring group we had deployed to observe the presidential election of 23rd February 2019. It was stated from the report of the MBA election monitoring group that the presidential election fell far short of a free and fair election. Atiku and the PDP also cited and pleaded the MBA's report of the ad hoc election monitoring group on the presidential election. Atiku's final fourth and fifth grounds of petition are hinged on the non-qualification of Buhari and his giving false information to INEC prior to the election. By virtue of Section 31.1 as well as Section 31.2 of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, Atiku Abubakar and the PDP claim that Buhari does not possess the educational qualification to contest the election to the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Muhammadu Buhari had filled and submitted the mandatory form CF001 which enables him to contest for the office of President to INEC on or about the 18th of October 2018. This form was also accompanied by the CV of Muhammadu Buhari as well as the general form of affidavit duly sworn to by Buhari at the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja along with copies of his membership card of the APC and his voter's card. This said general form of affidavit submitted by Buhari to INEC for the 2019 general elections was surprisingly sworn to on the 24th of November 2014 before High Court of Justice of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja almost four years preceding the 2019 general elections. This was obviously meant for the 2015 and not the 2019 election. In the petition of Atiku, that said general form of affidavit, the postal on the 24th of November 2014, which accompanied the form CF001 filled by Buhari, was stale. In the affidavit, Buhari claimed that all his educational qualification documents as filled in his presidential form labeled President APC-001-2015 are currently with the Secretary Military Board. Citing video clips and newspaper reports of the press statement issued by the military through the then Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Olajide Laleye, in January 2015, Atiku claims that the Nigerian military has since denied that it had or was in possession of Buhari's educational certificates. In addition, Atiku and the PDP claim that the middle school Katsina and the Katsina Provincial Secondary School, which Buhari claimed to have attended in his curriculum vitae between 1953 to 1956 and 1956 to 1961 respectively, were at that time non-existent. Along with references to WASC or WASC, the West African School Certificate and the Primary School Certificates, Atiku and the PDP claim that Muhammad Buhari was not qualified in the first place to contest election for the exalted office of President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As the courts begin the long winding sittings and the horde of lawyers on all sides engage in legal and verbal fisticuffs, the Nigerian nation holds its breath. All the gladiators. President Buhari, his closest challenger, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, their respective political parties, the APC and the PDP, are all at the tribunal, slugging it out in full public glare. The Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal of the Court of Appeal, as well as the Supreme Court, who waits inevitably further down the road in this proverbial clash of the titans, will hopefully save justice on a fair dose as the gladiators battle for the soul of the Nigerian nation. It is the duty of the press and the media, as the fourth estate of the realm, to remain eternally vigilant to ensure that justice is duly served. It is a duty owed to the Nigerian nation, her citizens, and her unborn generations. Many years after independence, we still find it hard to start.